Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications of whenever we release new videos. Also, please remember to share them to your social media. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us back to mountainous western Montana and the beautiful scenery of Glacier National Park. The mountains here are huge and stretch their rocky peaks into the sky. The forests on them are packed with pine, fir, spruce, and aspen trees with willow and green as well as red alder densely crowding the bodies of water in the valleys. Here white-tailed deer, moose, and elk disappear and reappear like ghosts while they search for their fodder. The large predators of this area include wolves, cougars, as well as black and grizzly bears. At 9 a.m. on Monday, August 14th of the year 2000, 26-year-old Kelly Kerpata and his 27-year-old girlfriend Kim Taffer were just four miles short of finishing their 55-mile hiking vacation. Kelly was walking slightly ahead of Kim as they chatted during the hike. Kelly was originally from Carmel, California, but relocated to Ann Arbor, Michigan to attend business school. That is where he met Kim. She was in the business program at Ann Arbor as well, and the two of them had a mutual appreciation for the outdoors. The two hikers were working on developing a budding romance and enjoyed each other's company on the hiking trip. They had put a lot of time into planning their trip to Glacier and decided to spend some time trail camping their way through some of the most beautiful parts. Before departing for their hike, they had watched a video on what to do if you encounter a bear in the backcountry at the park office. They had camped at Granite Park Campground on Sunday and were now making their way down Swift Current Pass Trail. This trail goes through the Many Glaciers area on the east side of the park. As they navigated the trail, they whistled and talked loudly with each other. They also wore bear bells and packed bear spray on their trip. As the two hikers hiked around Bullhead Lake, they rounded a bend in the trail. As the trail came into view, the hikers were terrified by the reality that a bear was sprinting toward them from only 50 yards away. They knew the bear would either stop or be on them before they would have time to react. They could see the bear reaching out with its front paws in leaps that covered 10 feet each. Kelly knew he would not be able to pull out his bear spray and decided that curling up in the fetal position and pretending to be dead was the best option. As Kelly hit the ground, Kim took a couple of steps into the bushes along the trail and curled into a ball herself, hoping the bushes may provide some kind of concealment. The angry bear immediately bore down on Kelly. His bear spray was clipped to the shoulder strap on his backpack, but the attack came on so quickly that he couldn't even get it out of the holster. The futility of the forethought of buying it for just this instance seemed bitterly ironic as he felt the bear swiping at his back and legs. With Kelly's head protected by his arms, the bear sank its canine teeth into the flesh of his thighs. It bit and clawed anything within reach as Kelly was jerked and pulled back and forth from the force of the bear's attack. The bear continued to claw his legs and hips while it drove its teeth into the same areas. For about ten seconds, the bear tore and bit at Kelly while he screamed but remained face down. Kim could see out of the corner of her eye and ominously saw the bear leave Kelly and walk over toward her. She could see a big brown blur just a few inches from her head. She refused to move or even make a sound. The bear spent a few seconds looking her over, then it turned around and walked away from the hikers. As soon as she was certain the bear had left the area, Kim scurried over to Kelly's side. His backpack was completely torn up and his sleeping roll was in tatters. He was still prone and still too worried to move in case the bear was watching nearby. Kelly and Kim tried to walk the remaining distance to finish the hike, but Kelly's injuries were too devastating. They decided to sit down and wait for someone to come along and find help for them. As they waited, they called out for help and kept a watchful eye out for the bear to return. After around 30 minutes, a park ranger overheard their shouts for help. He was just patrolling the trail area and happened to be in the perfect spot to help the hikers. The ranger administered first aid to stop the biggest sources of bleeding. He worked hard to comfort the hikers and calm them down. They were shaking and upset. He was worried about shock setting in on Kelly. Kelly's injuries were not life-threatening, so the rescuers decided not to use a helicopter to evacuate him. They initially tried to position him on a horse to ride back to the trailhead. The injuries to his hips and legs were too painful and debilitating for this to be completed, so they arranged for a litter to be brought to them. 
An ambulance was waiting for Kelly at the trailhead after the wheeled litter moved him three and a half miles down the trail. Kelly was quickly loaded into the ambulance and drove to Browning Hospital in Great Falls at about 3 p.m. on the same day. In the hospital, Kelly had several puncture wounds to his hips and legs sutured up. Several lacerations from the bear's claws were also closed, using stitches. While investigating the bear attack, bear scat was found at the scene. Investigators took samples of the scat to analyze for the presence of DNA. This might tell the investigators if they are looking for a black bear or a grizzly. It may also yield information indicating which individual bear was involved if they could connect it to a sample from a specific individual bear. Kelly had been planning to run in the Chicago Marathon in October but had to cancel the plans. He did indicate that this attack would not keep him from hiking, but he did say he would just not hike in bear country anymore. Officials indicated that the hiker's actions most likely minimized their injuries during the attack. Kim's quick thinking kept her from being injured at all. The western edge of Montana has had 11 human fatalities to bear attacks in the last 50 years. Montana has over 2,100 grizzly bears and around 15,000 black bears. Given that most of the state is farmland in the east, that puts nearly all of these bears in the western portion of the state. When Lewis and Clark came through this portion of Montana, they estimated that there were 50,000 grizzlies here, but numbers dwindled to under 1,000 at one point when they were endangered. After reviewing the details of this attack, I have a few questions for you. Do you think that bear bells do any good? Do you think the hikers let their guard down, being only four miles from the end of their long hiking trip? Why did the bear attack Kelly but not touch Kim? Do you think clipping your bear spray to your belt is better than clipping it to your backpack straps? Do you think Kelly got off relatively easy because he played dead? I will gladly read and reply to your thoughts, so please post them in the comments section below and let's talk about it. Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider clicking on the like button and clicking on the bell icon. We'll help you know when we post our new episodes. Posting our video links to your social media profiles furthers awareness, and it's fun. We slashed our prices in our merch store, linked below. So check out the bargains there while you shop. As a member of our human community, remember to adventure bravely and be careful out there, especially in bear country.